So this is the MP600 Pro, which is the latest and supposedly the fastest PCIe Gen 4 SSD from Corsair that promises the speeds of up to 7000 megabytes per second, which is basically the theoretical limit of how fast a Gen 4 SSD can be. Now I have a 2 terabyte version right here that will cost you $435 or euros, but there is also a 1 terabyte version available for which you will have to set aside $225, which is a lot, but it is still in line with most of the competition out there. So let's make this short and sweet and see how this new drive performs and how it compares to rest of the Gen 4 SSDs I tested so far. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. So first, let's check out the drive itself. It is a pretty good looking drive, which does matter for some of those builds where it will be visible. Corsair does ship it with a heat spreader, so it's not an optional extra, like in some other cases. And I would say it is very important as Gen 4 SSDs do get quite hot, so having a heatsink and some airflow is always a good thing. If you have a custom loop PC or you're planning to build one, Corsair also offers a Hydrax version of this SSD that has a built-in water block, which I think is pretty sweet. In terms of specs, it is a pretty standard drive. It uses 3-bit TLC NAND memory and it comes with a bit of DRAM for faster caching. Uh, the drive features hardware encryption and the warranty is pretty typical as well. I would say it's pretty unlikely that you will wear out this drive within 5 years, but you know, it's always good to have that backup. Now this is a Gen 4 SSD and to get the most of what this drive has to offer, it is best to have a system with a PCIe Gen 4 support, so an AMD desktop with an X570 or a B550 motherboard, or when it comes to Intel systems, uh, Gen 4 should be supported on the Z590 and Z490 boards for the upcoming 11th gen CPUs somewhere in the future. Now naturally you can just use it in any other system as well, but you won't benefit from the speed that this drive has to offer and I would say you're just better off buying a cheaper SSD instead. I use the same test rig as always with an Asus ROG Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard, AMD Ryzen 9 5950X processor with an NZXT Kraken all-in-one cooler, 32GB of 3600MHz Corsair Dominator Platinum memory, an RTX 3080 GPU and an 850W Seasonic Prime Titanium power supply. Now starting with sequential reads and writes, the MP600 Pro does really well there. Uh, it's sharing the first place with the Western Digital Black SN850 in pure read speeds and taking a comfortable win in maximum write speeds. Now I personally don't think these numbers are that important unless all you do is read and write to equally fast storage, so I would say it's not really a realistic measurement for most users out there. PC Mark 10, on the other hand, uses several different tests that are meant to replicate actual real-world scenarios, so it's a much more reliable and a more meaningful way to look at an SSD, and I would say just really easy to understand as well. Now the first one I do is the PC Mark 10 Quick Test, which is a very light test that is meant to replicate all the things we do with our systems that are not that heavy on your SSD, and many everyday tasks are just handled by the cache of the drive, and most of what this test does should be handled by that cache as well. Now the MP600 Pro does really well here, beating the Samsung 980 Pro and ending up just behind the Fire CUDA 520 and the Western Digital Black SN850. In the full PC Mark 10 suite, which is a much more intense test that is meant to replicate a more serious active use, like an OS drive for example, or maybe a scratch drive for your video editing rig, uh, Corsair ends up in the third place. It is ahead of the most Gen 4 and Gen 3 drives, but it does end up just behind the 980 Pro, and the Western Digital Black SN850 is significantly faster here. But keep in mind, that drive gets really hot within minutes and you should count the possible extra cost of either buying some extra cooling for that one or going for the version that comes with a heatsink that is also a bit more expensive. Now PC Mark 10 also includes an extremely heavy consistency test 
Now, I would say this one is not really relevant if you just care about normal everyday use, if you just care about gaming or video and photo editing. Uh, it is mostly for that heavy server use. And here the SSD does drop in the list quite a bit, so I would say it is not really exactly made for this use case, and if you need that, you should look somewhere else. But overall, the Corsair MP600 Pro is a very good SSD. It is about as fast as an SSD can be when you copy data to it and from it, and it holds up really well in benchmarks that are meant to replicate real-world scenarios. So I would say it's basically a very good alternative to drives like the Samsung 980 Pro or the Seagate Firecuda 520. The Western Digital Black SN850 is probably the main one that kind of stands apart, but again, that drive does get very hot, so you really need to make sure you have enough cooling for that, while this one stays completely fine, even if you don't add that additional airflow. But the only real issue right now is the fact that for most normal tasks, like making your PC boot faster or loading your games faster, it's really hard to recommend you spend almost twice as much per gigabyte on this drive than you would on a decent Gen 3 drive. Now, I do expect Microsoft Direct Storage to shift that balance a bit and show cases where a much faster SSD will actually really benefit games, but we don't really know when that will release and it's really hard to recommend spending so much money on an SSD now for a new technology that is not out yet. But, you know, let's assume that uh, you just want a lot of performance and you don't care so much about value. And then I would say, since it's very hard to actually feel the difference between all these top performing drives at the top of my graphs, you know, just go and get the one that has the best price at the moment. And that's it. Now, that's it for my review. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe to Tech Testers to never miss a video. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.